Alright, thanks for watching and today I will give you a very beautiful example of a technique called change of variables but for double or triple integrals which is really the analog of U sub of the U sub technique that you learned in single variable calculus. So let's try to calculate this really weird integral, integral of x squared minus xy plus y squared, where not only the function is weird, but also the region itself is very strange. The region is x squared minus xy plus y squared equals to so, which basically becomes an ellipse because in some sense, if you know the discriminant b squared minus 4ac is negative. So, not only is the function weird, but also the region itself is weird. And what we would like to do, we would like to use a change of variables to transform this strange integral into a much nicer one. And Here's the change of variables. So on the exam or something, because it's just multivariable calculus, we would give you those variables. But in general, if you're curious about how to find them, you basically use some linear algebra. Namely, you write this ellipse in terms of matrices. You diagonalize that matrix, whatever that means. And then that would give you the variables. And if you're curious, there's a similar video that I'll put in my description to kind of give you an idea of how to do that. But this is not the point of today. The point of today is, given the variables, how would you transform the integral? And the first thing is, you kind of figure out what happens to this region if we define the new variables u and v. So let's find what I call d prime. So what happens in the x and y variable? d is kind of like a slanted, a diagonal or slanted ellipse. So it might look like that. more or less, and then what happens if we define those variables u and v implicitly, what this becomes, d changes in hopefully a much nicer object. And let's figure out what this is by using the equation of the original ellipse here. So x squared minus xy plus y squared equals to what this becomes, now let's use the formulas for x and y. So square root of 2u minus square root of 2 thirds v squared minus square root of 2u minus square root of 2 thirds v times square root of 2u plus square root of 2 thirds v and then plus the same thing squared, square root of 2u plus square root of 2 thirds v squared. And we know it equals to 2. Now, it's very strange because it looks like a much more complicated equation. And why in the world would you replace something that simple by something that complicated? Because it will simplify. So just bear with me for couple of minutes, or, or fast forward if you don't have the time, then this expands, so 2u squared minus 2 times square root of 2 times square root of 2, which becomes 2, over square root of 3, uv, plus this squared, so 2 thirds v squared. And then minus, notice this is of the form a minus b times a plus b. So it becomes a squared minus b squared. So in other words, minus square root of 2u squared, which just becomes 2u squared, minus square root of 2 thirds v squared. So 
2 thirds b squared. And then the other gibberish, which is plus a 2 u squared plus 2 times 2 over square root of 3 uv plus 2 thirds v squared. And again, that equals 2. Then this simplifies because this cancels out with this. And moreover, this middle term here becomes minus 2u squared plus 2 thirds v squared. So for instance, the 2u squared here cancels out. And let's see what we're left with. Well, we're left with one factor of 2u squared. So again, just to that, this cancels out. So we're left with 2u squared. No more uv terms, and that's the whole point of this. And then, how many v squared terms do we have? 2 thirds, 2 thirds, and 2 thirds. So plus 2 thirds, plus 2 thirds, plus 2 thirds. v squared equals 2. And lo and behold, what this becomes, now need this picture, this just becomes 2u squared plus 2v squared equals 2. So, in other words, u squared plus v squared equals 1. Much, much, much easier than the other equation, x squared minus xy plus y squared equals 2. And in fact, now we know what this is. This is just a circle of radius 1. In other words, d, which was the inside of the ellipse, suddenly just becomes a disk of radius 1. And this we can just calculate, you know, now this we can much easily describe. So again, the whole point of this change of variables is we started with this very complicated ellipse, turned it into a much easier region. And that's the whole point of change of variables. Now, that's the first thing. The second thing is we need to figure out what this weird factor of dx dy becomes in terms of du dv. So let's see. Second thing, let's write dx dy in terms of du dv. And for this, we need this thing called the Jacobian. So the way to remember this, well, we still start with dx dy, but we have to multiply and divide by du dv. du dv. And last but not least, because we want things to be positive, this should be a positive change of area, we need to put absolute values here. Okay, now, what is this gibberish? Well, notice what it says. Take x and y and differentiate the hell out of it with respect to u and v. So what you have, let's see what our possibilities are. dx over du, dx over dv, dy over du, dy over dv. You get this matrix, and because you want a number, you just take the determinant. And how can you figure out that stuff? Well, remember, x and y are in terms of u and v. So x, I believe, was square root of 2u minus square root of 2 thirds v. And y was square root of 2u plus square root of 2 thirds v. So dx over du becomes square root of 2. dx over dv, it's minus 2 thirds. 
dy over du, it's square root of 2. dy over dv, it's square root of 2 thirds. And then you just cross multiply. So square root of 2 times square root of 2, that's 2, divided by this square root of 3. And then you just have to be careful. Minus minus becomes plus. So square root of 2 times square root of 2, that's 2. And then square root of 3. And that becomes 4 over square root of 3. In other words, the change in area here becomes 4 over square root of 3. Now, in general, this could be negative. So just make sure to put the absolute value. But since here it's positive, we're kind of lucky. And we get 4 over square root of 3 du dv. In other words, dx dy turns into 4 over square root of 3 du dv. And now we are ready to tackle the integral. So. Remember what happens here. We have double integral over our original region. Let's see, where's my red pen? Of our original function, x squared minus xy plus y squared with the original dx dy. What does that become? It becomes the integral over the new region by the way, this is the analog of plugging in endpoints when you do uh, use of. This function here, I don't know if you remember, but we had x squared minus xy plus y squared equals 2. We noticed this actually became 2u squared plus 2v squared equals 2. So this function just changed to this function. And dx dy, we saw it becomes 4 over square root of 3 du dv. So you see the um, bunch of steps, right? The three steps of doing a, a change of variables. You change your region, you change your function, you change the differential. And then what this becomes? Well, notice there's a common factor of 2 here, which gets multiplied by 4 over square root of 3, which just becomes 8 over square root of 3. Double integral of the function u squared plus v squared. And du dv, sorry, v prime and then du dv. And then all we need to figure out is how to calculate the integral of this new function with respect to d prime. But remember, d prime is actually pretty much a much easier uh, region because it was just, I believe, a circle of radius 1. Remember, that was d prime. A circle of radius 1, which you can just write easily with respect to polar coordinates. It's just saying the radius is between 0 and 1, and also the angle is between 0 and 2 pi. So what we get, that integral becomes 8 over square root of 3. The angle is between 0 and 2 pi. The radius is between 0 and 1. And what is like x squared plus y squared, in this case, it just becomes the radius r squared. Square root of this is the radius, so u squared plus v squared becomes the radius squared, the r d theta. And again, do not forget about the extra factor of r, which is, by the way, a Jacobian in of itself. And then let's see, we get 8 over square root of 3, 
There is no angle here, so what this becomes, it's like the integral of 1 from 0 to 2 pi, so it's just 2 pi. And then the integral from 0 to 1 of r cubed, dr, and so 16 over square root of 3, antiderivatives r to the 4 over 4 from 0 to 1, which becomes 1 quarter. So, in other words, uh, 16 pi, there we go, I forgot about the pi. And so 16 pi over square root of 3, integral from 0 to 1 of r to the 4th over 4, which becomes 16 pi over 3, square root of 3 times 1 fourth. And lo and behold, the final answer just becomes 4 pi over square root of 3. Or if you don't like that, it's 4 pi square root of 3 over 3. And this is how we do that problem. Um, again, just to reiterate, we have this very complicated integral over this super complicated region, but we just change variables, which simplifies our region and also our function here. And then the rest just becomes a simple polar coordinate exercise. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.